Um, do you think we should still be using celluloid cameras and things like that? No. No? I do Any not. reason why? The reason I don't believe we should be using celluloid anymore is that the revolution that's taken place in digital, the digital movement and digital editing it has revolutionised the way in which film is made. It's revolutionised the cost structures, it's revolutionised shooting ratios, it's revolutionised the ease of access to which young filmmakers now have to the technology. In the days of pure celluloid, it was a case of a TV studio had to make the films because of the costs involved. Right. That doesn't exist anymore. Anybody can now pick up a digital camera, a relatively cheaply available digital camera, and go and make movies. And that has lent itself to a brand new movement of independent filmmaking, and has lent itself to uh, people who would never previously have been able to gain access to the industry to have that access. In terms of quality, there was a case to be made up to about five years ago in terms of the, the quality of film and the kind of resolutions that you could get from film as distinct from the kind of resolutions that you could get from digital or from video at that time. That, that gap is constantly closing. Um, and as a result of which, I, I do believe that the celluloid has had its day. Right, okay. So do you think digital is still the future then? So yes, absolutely. This, absolutely. There's not going to be another uh, type of filming coming out that we can have? Well, it's, it's, it's very difficult to say, I d because we can't predict necessarily what kind of technology is going to come along next. Um, I mean, we've gone from filming on celluloid, which at the end of the day, we have to remember, is nothing more than a medium. It's simply a medium for capturing an image. That's all it is. Um, but it has so many additional complications with it in terms of the cost of that, in terms of the, the, the process that you then have to go through once the footage is shot. So you've got expense in terms of buying the footage, the cameras are expensive to hire, the, the film has to be stored very carefully, it's temperature sensitive, it is very light sensitive, obviously. It has to go for processing, which is an expensive process. That then has to be brought back and cut down for rushes etc. I mean even if you are doing celluloid these days there's also a digital capture going on which enables rushes to be done from what you expect to see on the film footage but the process of processing film, editing film, organizing film and then telecineing it is a long and expensive process. Um, I think if we're going to see significant advances in the future it's going to be in the digital arena. We're going to see CCD chips that are continuing to get better you know, we're at what, 40 megapixels now, we've got red 4s, red 5s, red 6s, we're looking at red 7s shortly. I think that we're looking at that constant development. Um, you know, the half-life technology is approximately a year and a half. So that technology is not going to stop and ultimately will surpass film, no question. Keep thinking of painting. Is it the end of oil painting? Is it the end of? I don't think. I really don't think. I think. I think celluloid is still going to be a choice. Seeing her coming out of the darkness like a ghost ship still gets me every time. Take a look at this drawing that we found just today. A piece of paper that's been underwater for 85 years. I'll be damned. Very recently, film was a, a digital sandwich between analog slices of bread, meaning acquisition was on film and exhibition was on film. Everything in between was digital. as precious to me as you were to your own mother and father. I swore to them that I would protect you, and I haven't. 24 frames a second isn't real. That's still pictures being displayed, and we're, and we're aware of it. We know it's not real. We know that when we're watching a movie, it's not real.
Right, my name's Alan Rowe, I'm lecturer in film studies at Chelmsford College. I've written about film and I've probably been watching film for uh, 55, no, no, 60, 60, 60 odd years, so I've got a lot of experience of film watching. Um, do you think that we should still be using celluloid today? Yes, I've got a, I've got a kind of as you might expect, the, the bulk of my film viewing over time has been watching it on celluloid, and so one gets used to an existing format. Um, and I would suggest that, in terms of the quality of, of what we see in the cinema, I'm still quite strongly prejudiced towards celluloid. Uh, it could possibly be argued that it's because I'm, uh, you know, I, that's what I've got used to. But I can recall about a year and a half ago, I went to see. Um, a film called The Master, which was on at um, two of my local cinemas. One was Multiplex, which was showing it in digital, and there was my local independent cinema, which still had um, celluloid projection, film, proper film projection. And by that stage, I'd got used to seeing stuff in digital, and I can remember a moment where I thought, actually, this isn't very good. Um, and I made a point of watching it. And although I didn't actually like the film very much, I actually found the experience really good. Um, I don't know what will happen. I don't know whether we will get to a situation where there is kind of privileged viewing of um, celluloid in certain circumstances. Um, I understand why cinemas would want, want not to have celluloid because it's a more expensive form. Uh, you know, the, the actual cost of a print is probably around about £1,000. The cost of a digital um, box for an interview film is only about 30 or 40 So there's a lot of difference there. But at the moment, my feeling still is, I would, if possible, I'd like to see it in daylight. Right. Um, so you don't think digital could still be the future? You'd rather see so? Oh, I would home. rather it was. But I suspect it is the future. I think what we will get. And and having said that, it does sound as if I'm kind of really very, very conservative on that. Um, I wouldn't actually, I, th I think my argument would be that it depends on what quality you're actually looking for. Um, it's a lot to be said for digital work at a low budget level. And I think that's impressive. For instance, at the moment, um, Godzilla is out, and obviously Godzilla is, is digital. But um, the director of that made a film about a year and a half ago called Monsters, which is digital, um, which he could not have done on celluloid. And I really enjoyed that as an experience. So what I suppose I'm arguing for is the preservation of celluloid as a form for a certain quality of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Um, so can we expect film companies to find a cheaper way of making cellular films or will it stay digital? No, it will stay. It, it, I think it's an inevitable drive that way. Um, the problem also I think is, is actually film, uh, film, major film companies don't seem to be interested in economy. Um, you know, they, 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 they have this view which they get from the box office which says, you know, Half of our business is, is the top five or six blockbuster films, inevitably digital, obviously high CGI, and they're not investing in lower lower quality. I think what I, I despair because I think in some senses what we're going to see in ten years' time is a real division in terms of high budget um, blockbuster films, each film doing more and more in that way, and. The bit that I'm going to enjoy, I think, is the lower budget digital work done by uh, people which they may not even see in cinemas, it may be much more conform that. What I despair of, I think, is almost a total disappearance of that kind of middle budget celluloid film, mm -hmm. which is what I've been yes. growing up on, and that's not going to be there anymore. So I'm, I'm feeling a bit sad on that, but I'll, I'll get used to it, I'll, I'll, I'll like it in the end.